So welcome back to the channel, How To Done Right. Today is a special day. I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to finish up this banana wine. It looks amazing. Today we're gonna get into filtering this wine, back sweetening it, and bottling it, and finishing it off. But if you look at it, it just looks amazing. It's kind of like a honey color. It's gonna taste great. I've already smelled it and it smells amazing. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button because I got more wine stuff coming and I can't wait to show you this video. There's so much more than where you're from. It's in the fabric of your soul. I just wanna go home. So I got my favorite shirt on. It's got banana palms on it. And we're dealing with the banana wine. My wife hates this shirt. Let's see if she notices. So you ready to make the banana wine? Ah, uh, are you wearing that shirt? <laughs> Just look at this banana wine. It's settled perfectly. It's clearer than I expected after the primary fermentation. And what we're gonna do today, as you can see at the bottom here, is all the dead yeast. We wanna get that out. I'm gonna try something different this time with the bentonite. I'm gonna use it twice. So we're gonna get our bentonite mixture uh, started here. We have one and one third cup warm water here, and I'm gonna add four teaspoons of the bentonite. And what we're gonna do is we wanna stir this to a slurry, which is basically like a milkshake consistency. So I will stir this up until it gets to that point. So you remember why we use the bentonite if you watched uh, my other videos on filtering wine. This is gonna take out the fine particles. We're gonna stir this for about three to four days after I put it in. We're going to let it sit total of seven to 10 days, and then we're going to do this again. That's what I mean by double filtering with the bentonite. I'm going to do it twice. I just want to see how much clearer it gets, and if I don't have to wait as long between racking. I'm going to let you know how it works out. Let's get this added to our sanitized carboy, and we'll get this banana wine racked into it and this stirred in. Okay, we got our sanitized carboy here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the bentonite. You can probably still see some of the bubbles here from the sanitizer. Again, that's okay. You wanna use star sand as a wet sanitizer. So I'm gonna dump this into our carboy without trying to make a mess. And if you see little lumps, that's okay. Cause remember, we're gonna be stirring this for the next three to four days. This will all dissolve. All right, we're ready to get this racked here. Uh, so I'm gonna take my airlock out. We're gonna put the racking cane in. I'm gonna put the hose down into my other bucket here. And now remember, when you're racking, I don't wanna get near that dead yeast at the bottom. So we're gonna keep it as far away from that as we can. And we'll just slowly put this racking cane down in until we get close to the bottom. See here, we've got about two, three inches from the bottom. I don't wanna suck up any of that yeast or banana pulp. So I may slowly start to tilt this a little bit Again, we're going to be racking this with the bentonite two more times, so I'm not too worried if some of it gets in. And that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Pretty happy with that. You can see all the dead yeast down in here. That's what we want to get out. So here you can see we have more headspace than I like to have. Um, so what I want to do at this point, if I have banana wine or whatever wine I'm making on hand, I'll just add a bottle of that into here to get it to the proper level. But since I don't, I'm just going to add regular water to bring it to the level. Remember, this recipe accounts for that. Uh, there's a lot more extra banana and fruit in here. So adding tap water, you know, as long as you don't have a whole lot, will not affect the uh, flavor at all of this wine. 
Now let's get this bentonite stirred in and the bentonite charged up to pull out these particles that we're trying to get rid of. And don't forget your airlock. Oxygen is your enemy. So today we are on day three. So this is the third time I'm going to be stirring this. Then we're going to let it sit for seven to ten days. You can see when I start stirring this, that bentonite will get stirred up once again, charging it to grab the fine particles. So we will just get this going here, make sure I'm scraping the bottom, and we'll check it out in seven to ten days. Seven days later. So if you remember in the beginning of the video, I said I was going to try something different with this bentonite. Uh, I'm not happy with the results. It's been seven days and you can see it's not as clear as I wanted to be. Again, it goes to show you, you should not rush wine making. Take your time with it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to rack this wine. I'm going to put additional bentonite and then I'm going to let it sit for 30 days like I normally do. And then that should clear it up. But again, banana wine expect extra rackings and that's probably what i should have did it was a good test it was a fail i'm going back to the way i used to do it rack it until i can kind of see my hand through it then the final racking will be using the bentonite to refine it and get it crystal clear and you'll see what i mean here in 30 days when we check it out again so let's get this racked into the bentonite jug we'll get everything sanitized and then we'll put this down in our basement for 30 to 40 days and we'll see what it looks like and I guarantee you we'll be ready for bottling and sweetening at that time. So we got the wine racked here. You can see it's starting to turn a pretty good color. Uh, I got my sterilized stick here. Remember the bentonite's at the bottom. I want to get all that suspended in here. And we're going to be stirring this for the next two to three, four days. Because this is what will refine it. This will get all your fine particles out. And when you see this in the next 30 to 40 days, you're going to be able to see how crystal clear this got with this bentonite. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking about, do I degas my wine? The answer is never. However, when I'm stirring this, this is doing some degassing. So I guess in a little way I am, uh, but I don't go out of my way to do it. This is all I do. So that's it. It's stirred. I got my sanitized airlock in here. I'm going to sit this in push this down and make sure you get to the proper water level. This will go into my basement for the next 30 days. So we'll check it out in 30 days and then we're going to bottle this 30 to 40 days later. So if you remember, we started off with this banana wine. I showed you how to get it ready in part one. And we're going to taste this in a future video where I'm going to show you all the wines I've made this year and we're going to rank them. This is very important because a lot of you have asked, what is my favorite? Stick around for that video because it's going to be great. And I'm going to give you my top wines to make if you're just starting out in the hob. Now to finish your wine and to bottle it, you need two ingredients. You need Camden tablets and potassium sorbate, which is stabilizer. Do not miss these two ingredients when bottling because especially if you're back sweetening your wine, the potassium sorbate will help fermentation not to start back up and blowing corks that you will just have a mess. So these, in my opinion, are critical elements when you are getting ready to finish your wine. So we're going to make a simple syrup. We're going to back sweeten this banana wine because I'm a fan of semi-sweet wine. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, we got four cups of sugar here. We're going to add that to our pan. And then we're going to get four cups of water. So here we're going to add our four cups of water. 
and we're going to turn the heat on and we want to get this basically dissolved in until it is clear. If you watched any of my other videos, you'll see what I mean here. Uh, it'll turn clear. It'll be almost to the boiling point and then we're going to shut it off and let this cool. You can see it's getting dissolved. It's not clear yet. We're not quite done. So you can see here the simple syrup here. You can see bubbles starting to form at the bottom of this. So it's getting close to boiling and more important is how clear it is. That's what you want. You don't want to be able to scrape any sugar from the bottom. Sanitation is very important in winemaking. So we're going to make, I always make a two and a half gallon batch. So we're going to add a half ounce of star sand. I have a whole video on sanitation. Make sure you check it out if you're not sure how to sanitize. So here's our half ounce of star sand. We're going to get that in our bucket and then we're going to add our two and a half gallons of water. So let's get some of our equipment. You know I love squirt bottles. It just makes things easier to spray down and sanitize sometimes. Uh, we got our bottle brush. We got to sanitize all our bottles that we're going to use for this wine. Measuring cups, throw them in there. This is the, uh, the tool that's going to be used to fill our wine bottles. We want to sanitize that. And also our racking cane. Get that in there and get a few pumps through the hose. We want to sanitize that. Uh, I'm going to use this to help back sweeten my wine. It's a little dropper. And a cup to, you know, kind of just go over some things as well. You want to make sure you're getting all of your hoses inside and out. And then also what I'm going to do is I got about 25, 26 corks. You want to get these sanitized as well. Number one, they'll be easier to get into your bottles. And number two, it's going to eliminate any bacteria. So we're just going to throw some sanitizer in on these corks. And we'll get them soaking as well. And don't forget a stir paddle because when we put some chemicals in here, we're going to want to stir it up. Okay, so now our next step is we need to get these bottles washed and sanitized. So we got sanitizer in here. We got our bottle uh, squisher thing going. We're going to go ahead and wash 24 to 26 bottles because that's what we'll take for this five gallon batch. Usually a gallon batch will make five bottles. So... Five gallon batch, do the math, and we're about 25. So let's get these sanitized and we'll get to the next step. All right, so we got our bottle sanitized. We now are ready to rack our wine into some of these chemicals. So we're putting five ca crushed Camden tablets. And again, the best way to do it is two sanitized spoons, crush them up in between. That works perfect. And then we're going to get the stabilizer in here and then we're going to rack the wine directly into this bucket and this bucket is what we will use then to fill our wine bottles so then we can get them corked so again five camden tablets one per gallon since five gallon batch five of them all right so we're ready to put the stabilizer in potassium sorbate this will prevent corks from blowing uh, if you're back sweetened wine, you definitely have to do this. We're putting a half a teaspoon per gallon. So we're putting five half teaspoons in here. So let's get to racking. We got our sanitized racking cane. We're going to drop this down, put our tube down in our bucket here, and we'll get this siphon going. I'm going to put this racking cane down into our container here. We're going to keep it as far off from the bottom. We want to keep it away from all that sediment. And again, we don't care about throwing a little bit of this wine out, but we do not want to get sediment in there. You can see here, we're draining down and we're going down to our bucket. You want to keep that hose down in the wine. My hose is a little bit short, but you can see here at the bottom how we're keeping that racking cane off. You can see this little bit of sediment down here. We're going to keep it a little bit, half inch off of that when we get to that point. But you can see the wine is going down and it smells amazing. All right, so now we got the chemicals at the bottom. We got our wine now racked into it. So now we just want to get those chemicals incorporated all the way through this wine. Again, it was the stabilizer and Camden tablets we put in there. We'll give this a, a quick little stir to get everything mixed in. 
Again, if you want to degas your wine, this would be the time to do it. It's not necessary because we did it at the bentonite stage when we were stirring it. That did a lot of it. This is doing some of it also. So here we go. This is the Laura and Todd way, down and dirty, how to do this. What we will do now is we're going to take two bottles of wine out of here because we're going to keep two dry. We're going to let it as is, and then we're going to mix in some sugar and taste it as we go. So let's get those two bottles done. All right, we got our siphon going. Now we're going to bottle our two dry wines. So get down here. And you can see Laura is filling them up. Just look at the color, it's amazing. So we got our two dries bottled. Now we're gonna go ahead and get some semi-sweet going. I've got our simple syrup here, and we're gonna probably just put this in like a cup to two cups at a time. Again, I'm pretty sure we're gonna use this from experience. But let's just add maybe um, a third of this, and then we'll stir it in and we'll taste it. You ready to taste? Yep. So we're pretty sure this is going to be pretty dry, but... Uh... And not even close. She says it's not even close, so we're going to add more. <laughs> and she's right. It's not bad. Still needs a little more. Yeah. A little more. We're probably going to add maybe half of this yet, and then probably the rest will be for our uh, sweet wine. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, let's bottle our semi-sweet. I don't know how many we'll do. We'll probably do maybe five, six sweet, and we'll do the rest semi-sweet. So let's get going. So when you're filling the bottles, you can see here, we're putting it about two inches down, right around where the neck is, because you got to leave a little um, air space in there between the cork and the wine. So uh, again, two inches is perfect. That's where you want to get to. So we got our sanitized corks. Now we're just going to load them up in this professional model corker and get them into our bottle. Here's a tip. When you get your bottles labeled and so forth, like I did here, make sure you put them in a plastic bin like, like I do. This in, it is just in case corks would blow, blow or something. Um, at least you're going to capture some of the wine. I'll let it like this for about three to four days just to make sure, even up to a week. All right, so that's a wrap. We just bottled the banana and finished the wine. We got two dry, five, four sweet, and whatever the difference is, we got a total of 24. So yeah. it was a great day. We're gonna try it. We saved a little bit here to try it, but let me tell you, it's gonna be a lot better in a couple months from now. We'll do a video on that, uh, like one of them shorts. Um, but let's just taste it and see. Man, I tell you, it's going to be, it's amazing. I, I can't believe I like it because I don't like bananas. And this really, it still tastes like bananas, but. Bananas right at the end, but it is really good. Yeah. Make sure you watch for that video. Also, you didn't see a lot of my sweetening wine video. I got a whole separate video that I recorded along with here. So make sure you watch the sweetening video because it gets into how to do a technical versus our way. It's going to be a good one, too. That'll come up next. Stay tuned and... Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the road, maybe in another channel. Mm -hmm.